Okay, uh, working on this uh, Camaro 43% extra 300 and doing the covering for it. Uh, this is for Paul's. Uh, I'm working on the wings here which have a lot of swoops and swooshes and in particular uh, it's got a lot of parts where the covering comes together and it'll leave like a, a silver stripe and so I've been trying to rack my head around how do I get that silver stripe nice and even. So I came up with this uh, this new little technique uh, worked really well on on this one here so uh, was able to get this one here pretty close and then this one here pretty close this is probably more visible in the camera uh, and then when you get down to here um, you can see there's a, a blue one yellow silver and there's another blue one as well here so there's a lot of a lot of detail and, and the lines have to be really parallel so came up with a little uh, technique that I think uh, is working pretty well so just wanted to show it so step one is right in here I want to leave um, a, almost a quarter of an inch silver stripe in here between the blue and there'll be yellow that goes here so the yellow will be Windex on top of the silver and I want it to come and basically leave that quarter inch or just a little bit less, it's called 3 16 of a gap uh, of silver showing. So what I did is I took the painter's tape, which is, uh, this is 1 8th, and I basically laid it down here parallel to the, to the blue stripe. Uh, so there's a 1 8th inch thick blue tape and then about a 16th of an inch of silver. So that gives me my 3 16 gap. Uh, and then I'll show here the next step in a sec. Okay, next step then is uh, I got some some paper. Uh, my wife had a couple nice rolls of paper. She doesn't know it yet, but I borrowed it. Anyways, um, put it down on top of the wing, and then I take a nice lead pencil, and that tape underneath that painter's tape creates a ridge and much like when you used to put coins underneath your paper and you'd color it and you get the face to show through on the paper um, same thing here if you look closely you can see how when I rub the pencil across it creates a line so basically um, this area right here is where I will make my cut of the yellow and if I cut that right out and um, put it back down on top of the wing, I'm going to create that gap, which is the 1 8 inch uh, thick tape plus the 1 16th. And I'm going to get my, my nice even gap against the blue. So uh, just show it here. Works really slick. Basically just color it in. I'm not using the sharp part, so I'm not scratching the monocoat or the wing. So it's going to basically be the inside, which is right here. That's where I'll cut. A little tougher here because uh, there's two thicknesses of paper, but even still, it's, it still shows. So, there we are. So basically, I'm going to go right and cut this line right here. If I do that right, I'll end up with a yellow piece on the inside that when I lay it down with Windex is going to leave a perfect gap and it's no waviness or anything. So anyways, that's the plan. I'll show you next step. Okay, here is next step. I've got my yellow mono coat taped down onto my floor and uh, the template on top. So this outside part here is the part I use the lead pencil to get my, my line, which is so critical to keep it consistent. And then I drew my inside. So it starts off at a point and stays consistent, gets a little wider here, narrows in, and then gets wider, uh, which is right here. Starts off at a point, gets a little wider through here, narrows, 
and then goes back to a wide. So I basically, the template I used here, I basically flipped it over and used it on this side here to, to draw that inside curve. So they're, they're gonna be exact, and the only thing is that the profile will change ever so slightly from the part that I used the lead pencil on just to get that real nice consistent silver uh, stripe once it's laid down. So next job then, take the good old X-Acto knife. I'm going to basically just freehand cut this now right through the paper and the mono coat. I'll do the outside part first since it's the most critical to get a nice smooth consistent line and then I'll go back and I'll cut the inside one. This floor by the way has seen so much cutting and it is crazy durable. Good old Home Depot floor, super cheap, love it. All right, got the outside cut, which is the most critical. Um, I still have to cut out the the inside to create the, the swoosh, um, but I just wanted to show now how it turned out. So you can see it's basically, we got our very consistent gap here. And obviously once I iron it down, it's gonna get even better, but you can see how it worked out pretty good. Pretty happy with that. So the inside one isn't nearly as critical um, because I'll, I'll redo the next blue swoosh, which is super, super thin, about an eighth of an inch. I'll do that one um, to match the yellow. So not too worried about this inside one now. So this is going to be much easier now to to freehand the swoosh and I still have the template down here on the ground so I'll put the template back on top cut this out and Windex down. Okay semi-final product just Windexed it all down with my uh, spare card and it turned it really well. Got a nice consistent gap here should work out good so I will let this uh, dry overnight so that the mono or the uh, Windex evaporates and then I'll uh, go over it with a nice hot iron and seal it down permanently. We should be good to go. So the next step then is uh, I basically have to start doing a few more blue pieces. So like on this one then I have to do a very thin blue stripe that follows the yellow and then I have to do this um, this little blue swoosh here to finish it off. Coming.